Pearl. Hi there, Elizabeth Hines from Our Paleo Family and today we are talking bone broth. You have probably heard um, how wonderful it is and you need to be drinking it all the time. Stop drinking coffee, start drinking bone broth and I will never tell you to stop drinking your coffee but I will say that I think adding bone broth into your diet would be a good idea and here are some of the reasons. It is very high in minerals. It is high in some essential amino acids. Um, essential meaning you need to get them from your diet. Amino acids are the building blocks of proteins and what that does for your body is um, helps to maintain health of your soft tissues like the lining of your digestive tract. So if you have irritable bowel syndrome or one of the inflammatory bowel diseases like Crohn's or um, ulcerative colitis. You need to keep your gut lining healthy. Of course everybody does but those people have a disease of their gut lining. So the, um, the healing and healthy properties of bone broth are very good for those particular conditions. Um, a lot of people, uh, you probably have heard if you read blogs or People Magazine or anything like that. Celebrities are talking about bone broth because it takes away their wrinkles and their cellulite and makes their teeth shinier and all these things um, and your hair bouncier and um, it's very possible um, because of the collagen and the minerals that are in it and I personally have noticed an improvement in the arthritis in my feet with the addition of collagen to my diet and it's not all coming from bone broth. I'm taking additional collagen from, let me get it, I use this Great Lakes Gelatin which is a pure beef collagen and it is a powder that dissolves completely in your liquids. I always put it in a hot liquid that says it dissolves in cold so I'm getting extra collagen from this and then also broth. Um, so I take this because I don't have broth every day. But I want to show you how easy it is to make. And I'm going to start, I've turned on my Instant Pot. Instant Pot has made broth so much easier because it used to have to cook for about two days because you really need to cook it a long time to get all the benefits out of the bones. So I am going to start with two big turkey wings. They don't have these out it, at my Whole Foods, I had to ask for them, but they have them back in the meat in the meat department. So you just have to ask. I've got a little bit of oil in there, and it's on saute. You don't have to do this, but I always think if you brown your meat, it adds a lot of flavor. So I like to do that. So let me lift my hand. You can roast your bones. You can roast your bones and your vegetables in the oven and you can put them in with your water to boil them either on the stove or in a slow cooker or in a pressure cooker. Um, I don't do the roasting and this is the first time I've actually used the turkey, the turkey wings. Usually I just have a carcass of a rotisserie chicken. This is all the skin and the bones and the cartilage. But this chicken has been rotisserie, so it's already been cooked. And I'm not going to get a whole, whole lot out of that. And so when, you're, when you've made your broth and you have strained it and you refrigerate it and then you pull it out of the refrigerator the next day, it should be like jello. You want it to be gelatinous because that's the collagen. That's why you're making it. And my broth was not gelatinous enough because I was just using I've already pre-cooked bones. It tasted good, um, but I wasn't getting the properties that I really wanted out of it. So I thought, I'm going to get a couple wings. If you could get chicken feet, you can get nets, something like that um, that has a lot of collagen that will really add to your broth. So I got these big wings. Let me just flip them once. Kind of unwieldy. Those will brown really fast. And so basically, all you need to make good broth are bones. Mm -hmm. And you want, just like you would have good quality um, meat from grass fed animals, you want bones from good, healthy animals. So we have our organic chicken carcass from Whole Foods. Um, my pasture-raised turkey wings, you need your bones, and then you need some vegetables, salt and pepper, and water. A lot of people put some vinegar 
and say that, that helps to reach the minerals out of the bone. But the experts are now saying it's not really necessary. So I'm going to leave the vinegar out because it does give it a little bit of a sour taste. And I want that. So when I cut celery for us to eat celery for staff, I leave, I cut the tops off. Because these leaves have a lot of flavor. And that's what I want in my broth. So I don't want it to totally taste like celery. So just a handful of celery with leaves. I'm going to turn this off. It's sauteed enough, it's fine. So I've got a handful of celery. Usually I have big carrots, I didn't have big carrots. So I'm just going to put in a handful of these carrot chips. And then some onions. <clears throat> that is really loud. This is a very large onion. I'm going to cut it in half. Sometimes, if my onion looks like really clean and it's organic, I will put the peelings in too because it helps to give your broth a prettier color. And we eat with our eyes. I want it to look nice. But this one has some dirt on the outside, and I don't want that in there. So this big chunk, you're going to strain all this out. Woo! So I've got onion, carrot, celery, my chicken wings. Here are the, the skin and the bones from my rotisserie chicken. And this one has been in the refrigerator overnight. So, um, I don't know if you can see this cameraman, but there's, like, there was broth in the bottom of my pan that has gel. So I want that. I'm going to pour a little water in here. So loosen that up. And get all of that in there. And then, because I have used that to saute, I need to use something else to um, get water in my Instant Pot. Your Instant Pot has a max fill line, so you obviously want to be respectful of that and not fill it above the max fill line, which is just about an inch below the top. So I can probably put another one of these in. I'm going to put in some salt and pepper. Just to my taste, I, I tend to under season it because I don't know right now what all I'm going to use this broth for and I can always add some salt and pepper later. So. At, at most, a teaspoon of sea salt, half a teaspoon of pepper. And you might be thinking, is she going to pull the chicken off of those wings, the meat, and eat that? And my answer is no, because it's going to cook so long that any meat that's in here will be really dry. It'll be like eating sawdust. So we really are sacrificing that little bit of meat that's on those bones in order to get the good quality broth. And this little, that's gonna push him down. Okay, and then put the lid on, that's all there is. We've got bones, we've got carrot, celery, and onion, salt and pepper, and water. My cameraman's gonna show you what that looks like up close. It's not very pretty. It won't be very pretty when it's done either, but it will taste good. Okay, so lid goes on. Push the little valve over to sealing. I've seen instructions for making broth anywhere from 20 minutes to two hours. And I did two hours the first time and it was not nearly long enough. And I'll show you what I mean and how I'm able to tell if it's long enough when we're done. So I now do mine for three hours. So 60 times three is 180. So for some reason, I think maybe this thing stopped at 170. We'll see. No, it lets me go to 180. 180. Okay, and it is going to take maybe 10 or 15 minutes to come under pressure because it's full. There's a lot of water in here, and um, then the time will start ticking down. Hey there, so it's been about four hours since I started my bra, and it took about 30 minutes for the pressure to come up, and then I cooked it for three hours. And it's about 20 minutes now since it finished. 
and the little float on top has come up. So there's probably, you can see this little silver thing that's called the float and it's, it's raised up. So I'm going to switch this valve to venting and a little bit of steam might come out, but probably not too much. I just have to get my hand on the correct side. Okay, so I was wrong. The float is down when the pressure is down and the float is up when the pressure is up. So that's the way we need to remember that. So the float finally went down 20 minutes automatically just depressurizing on its own, about five minutes for the pressure to release once I um, switched the valve for the quick release. So it was under a lot of pressure after three hours of cooking and a lot of volume in there. So I'm just going to take the lid off. I'm going to show you what it looks like and then once it cools a bit we will strain it. There. So my broth is cooled for about an hour and I'm going to start straining it right into my containers that I'm going to use for storage. So I just have a fine mesh strainer and have this little, I don't know, feet I guess so it sits on the edge and I'm just going to pull my broth through there and it'll catch all those vegetables. Let me grab something real fast. I'm going to put my dishcloth right here because I don't want to have to clean up all those drips from um, around the edge of my pot. Once I get some of my broth out of here, I'll be able to just pick up my, my pot and pour it directly, but right now it's too heavy and it's too hot, so I'm just going to use this measuring cup. And I'll leave this sit out for just a little bit because it's really it's really hot and then I'll refrigerate it and then once it totally chills down I'll fritz it for some soup. And I want to show you how I know that my broth has cooked a long time and I've gotten all the minerals out that I that I want. That's our whole reason for making the broth is your bones should be brittle at the end and I'm using my tongs because I it's still steaming it's really hot but yeah I just can crush it with the tongs can you see that so this is a a large bone I don't know if this is maybe the, the femur bone or the, the, like the big leg bone and this is the big fat end and I can just real easily crush it it's very brittle and that's exactly what we want and I keep my trash can nearby so as the strainer kind of fills up I can just dump those solids in there and then keep going and scoop out some more and this this instant pot full of broth will make a nice big batch of soup for my family for to eat a meal and then have some leftovers that's it Hi there, so I just want to show you my broth after it's refrigerated. This yellow is the fat that's risen to the top, which sometimes there will be um, a pretty thick layer like this, and you can just peel that off. This is not very much, and I'm not afraid of this fat. It's from a healthy animal, and there's not a lot of it, so I'm just not going to worry about scraping it off. But I wanted to show you what you want from your broth. Can you see it jiggle? Watch that wiggle. See it jiggle? Just like jello. That's because there's collagen in there. I didn't add gelatin to this. I didn't put a box of chicken flavored jello in my broth. This is just what happens when you have um, some good cartilage that you cook down with your bones. So if you recall when I made this broth, I had the carcass of a rotisserie chicken which is an already pretty well cooked chicken. And then I had two turkey wings that were just fresh from the butcher's counter. And I browned them for just a minute in my Instant Pot and then I cooked this for three hours. And this um, gelatinous broth is exactly what we want. That gelatin is good for our gut, it's good for our joints, it's good for our skin. And that's what you wanna look for. If, it's, if your broth after being refrigerated for a couple of days doesn't get gelatinous like this, you need to find some different foods to put in your broth. Some bones that have some cartilage on them. Chicken feet are great, but it's hard to find them. 
So feet or wings would have a lot of cartilage in them. It'll give you this good gelatinous broth.